Good evening and welcome to Newsfeed. Today is Thursday, March 8th, 2018. I'm Erin Dolan. And I'm Lauren Guido. We're excited to have you here watching with us tonight. Let's see what's happening in Ann Arbor. Ex-U.S. Army Private Chelsea Manning is coming to campus next Thursday. Manning will speak on the evening of March 15th at the Michigan Theater. She was an intelligence analyst for the U.S. Department of Defense before being sentenced to prison for 35 years for her role in leaking classified military information to WikiLeaks. In 2007, the U.S. Army indicted Manning for unauthorized possession and distribution of more than 70,000 classified diplomatic and military documents. She was released last May after former President Obama communicated her sentence, commuted her sentence. She'll be speaking on social, technological, and economic ramifications of artificial intelligence and on the practical applications of machine learning. With the university still pending a visit from white supremacist Richard Spencer, President Mark Schlissel outlined a new sexual misconduct plan this past Monday. While meeting with the Senate Advisory Committee on University Affairs, he proposed cultural education training as a new strategy, stating, quote, we need to make a commitment to have everyone trained to a certain level and retrained, unquote. This training would make university faculty more aware of protections and for reporters and whistleblowers. He also endorsed hiring an outside professional to assess how well the new programs are working. Due to the 40% increase in misconduct-related reports from 2016 to 2017, these new plans are necessary in order to combat workplace harassment. He also updated the committee on Spencer's visit, saying the university is still looking for a safe place for him to speak. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker was named Wednesday as the keynote speaker for the 63rd annual Fight for Freedom Fund Detroit NAACP dinner. The organization looks to book a high-profile political figure each year, and Booker, an African-American Democrat, fits the part. The, the Detroit branch of the NAACP president, Reverend Dr. Wendell Anthony, hailed Booker as representing the most progressive part of political leadership in the United States. Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts addressed the event last year. Now it's time for a short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat, and I'm doing a downward dog, and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How do you not love him? Hey, I'm Tyler Perry. Do you know what hunger in America looks like? Well, it has many faces, and 15 million of those belong to children. Yet billions of pounds of food go to waste each year, and this is unacceptable. You can be a part of the solution. Join us in supporting the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks, which rescues our surplus foods and provides meals to many families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org today. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. Welcome back to the show. You're watching Newsweek. Let's get into our national and international news. President Trump plans to sign an order on Thursday finalizing his proposal to impose tariff on steel and aluminum imports. Trump's rush to push through the tariff is viewed as an effort to appeal to voters to rally behind the Republican candidate and Pennsylvania's special election to be held next Tuesday. The tariff plan was announced without notice last week during Trump's meeting with industry leaders. The 25% tariff on steel imports and 10% tariff on aluminum raise concerns amongst economists. It is also believed that Trump's economic aide, Gary Cohn, is resigning as a result of dispute with the president and his protectionist aides on this issue. White House Chief Economic Advisor Gary Cohn has resigned. 
Gary Cohn, the former president of Goldman Sachs, is a strong free trade advocate. His departure comes on the heels of President Trump's announcement to impose st steel, stiff tariffs on steel and aluminum imports. Cohn strongly opposes tariffs and for this reason has decided to resign. His departure has had a negative impact on the market along with Trump's announcement as stocks plummeted this week with the Dow Jones closing yesterday at 24,801 points, which is a quite large drop from starting just over 26,000 points in January. Cohn, in a prepared statement, said, quote, I am grateful for th to the president for giving me this opportunity and wish him and the administration great success in the future. As Cohn's departure day is in just a few weeks, the administration is now searching for his replacement. Last Friday, northeastern states were battered by a, a horrific snowstorm dubbed a bomb cyclone due to its relentless snowfall, high coastal flooding, and 70 mile per hour winds. This brutal storm caused two million people to be without power, thousands of flight cancellations, and at least nine deaths. Mother Nature has not given northeastern there's time to catch their breaths. Starting last night and continuing into late this evening, another winter storm plummets the region. 40 million people are already under winter storm watches and warnings. Winds are expected to be lower than those of Friday storms, but snow is estimated to fall at a rate of two inches per hour. With the region still recovering from the damages of the bomb cyclone, we can only hope that residents remain safe during the second round of treacherous winter weather. Jared Kushner, senior advisor and son-in-law to President Trump, took a trip to Mexico yesterday serving as the head of the United States delegation. His task was to meet with Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto. A senior administration official told ABC News that the goal of the trip is to, quote, explore ways to expand cooperation around a range of bilateral issues, including security, immigration, trade, and economics. The delegation is also made up of officials from the National Security Council and the State Department. As Kushner has been mired in political scandal and embarrassment over the last several weeks, such as having his security clearance lowered, the trip serves as an opportunity for him to redeem himself as an effective member of the Trump administration. UK police have reported that a former Russian spy and his daughter were specifically targeted and poisoned with nerve agent over the weekend. Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia are currently both in comas fighting for their lives, authorities have said. A police officer who arrived at the scene has also fallen ill and is now in critical condition. Nerve agents are poisonous chemicals that shut down the body's nervous system. When exposed in large doses, they can be deadly. Scripple has sought refuge in the UK after it was discovered by Russian authorities he had been a spy for Britain. His daughter was one of the few family members of his family still alive and was visiting him from Russia when they were targeted. This case has drawn particular attention, as this is not the first time enemies of Vladimir Putin have mysteriously died on British soil, enraging the British public. Well, that's all we have for you tonight. I'm Aaron Dolan. And I'm Lauren Guido. And, and you've, you've just been, been news-fed. Fed.